Hello everybody, it's Leslie here again from Creative Living and I'm just going to make a video about kind of using clay and using some other materials in your art and I've got this clay here which is Daz clay um, I do have another one here which was from Wilco store haven't opened that yet so I might kind of test that out and see the differences but um, I kind of wanted to demonstrate a few techniques and think to, with you all about why using clay can be helpful for regulating emotions and expressing yourself in an art therapy process as well as in your own recreational way so I'm just going to show you a few things and if you want to have a go and play play around with with the clay and with any other materials that you've got let me know how you get along okay so I've prepped some clay in advance so that can be just cut off with a knife or you can use um, a piece of cotton to to ease over to to be able to take that off the block and I've got a few other things just to kind of use as tools and use along the way so I've got a brush there's you can have kind of specialist clay tools but I'm not going to be using those today because not everybody has them just a normal kind of butter knife a pencil and what seems to be like a cocktail stick or something like that but it's sort of a bit bigger and some water as well so when I um play around with something like blue tack what can be really helpful for that is a way of sort of really needing that and like something quite stretchy about blue tack and then we've got some play-doh and people really like the smell of this but i'm not so keen i know a lot of people kind of that like smell it and they love the smell of it so there's loads of like that's an alternative and then so there's some of the same things can be done with those things and the air hardening clay which we're gonna have a play around just now and show you some stuff so i've just started to kind of move it between my hands knead it in my hands it's quite cold to start with but then after a little while it does warm up and the thing with this is that it will just as the name says just dry in the air so it will start as you touch it it will start to feel a bit drier in may that you do need to work quite quickly so one thing you can roll it into a ball so keep one hand out and roll with your other hand might be that you need to press down a bit more firmly in some of the places another thing to do is the same thing with your hand like rolling like a sausage like that that can be done on a table just pressing firmly down some people like to press on quite softly with the clay other times people find like pressing pressing down quite hard is really nice and can be quite therapeutic so we'll take another piece so if you are wanting to make something join pieces together then what's really important is that you are thinking about how that might go together so sometimes people would just put two pieces of clay together like that if you had two pieces now because they're soft at first they seem to be joined together but actually can very easily come apart so instead of having two pieces of clay like that what we need is to have two pieces of clay like this and then if you try to pull your hands apart then it's a lot more difficult so the way that we do that is by scratching into the surface we'll make that circle back again with a knife or like building up the lines if you've got specialist clay tools then you can do that with this like the lines of a knife can be just as good and then we're using your finger with a bit of water just to press that water in on both sides like i said before this is a really strong way of joining the clay together now this works a lot better for the clay that you would 
use and dry in a kiln, like some of the stoneware clay that exists, but you would need to have a kiln for that. So that can be, you can actually use a brush to press in or just use your fingers to press down as well. It's a good way of joining the clay up. Now I'm just gonna mess that up and just have more of a play. So pressing down with my fingers. So it feels quite nice in my fingers and then rolling that back up again, thinking about how 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 hard can I squeeze the clay? Ooh, and can I relax my hand? And then go into my other hand. How hard can I squeeze the clay? Ooh, ooh, even harder. Ooh, and then relax my hand. So if, if your son or your daughter or somebody that you know is struggling to manage their emotions and they're feeling quite stressed or feeling quite uptight, using this and really pressing with, into the clay can be a way of kind of expressing those feelings from a sensory point of view. So really tapping into the sensory um, elements of, of the material. And that can be really helpful because quite often our emotions are stored in a sensory way, stored and stuck within the body. So I'm pulling these bits apart. So it's working from a sensory perspective to begin with, then thinking about emotions that emerge from this. And then that's where something more cognitive may come from it so it might be that there's symbols and ideas that emerge from when when the clay is being used it might be that connections between different thoughts and feelings come up it might be that memories are activated and they could they could be quite difficult memories but they may be processed in quite a different way because of using the clay so We'll squish all that back together again. So here I ha actually have some um, little tools and these came from the sand tray. So let's just have a little play around with them and see like what else we can do. So that's got a star, press it into that. I've got like a little rolling pin. I'm trying not to press too hard because my camera's just on my table and it all keeps wobbling. But maybe not much we can do about that. So pressing down. So actually being able to regulate how the rolling pin is moving may be something that, that people may struggle to do. So a young child might need a bit of help with this. But... Um, but being able to control the materials and manipulate the the clay in different ways might feel a sense of control or a sense of mastery as well. So I've just kind of thought, well, we'll play with like the knife, bring in like some patterns. You've got the like little ridges on there. So repeat patterns if you wanted to make a shape that was more regulated that's a good time to cut this is on a, just a little bit of of um, wooden board but be mindful that it could stick if you if you're not watching out and then like the end of a brush can be pressed into this so it might be that you hold in mind a design that you want or it might be that you just want to press in a more expressive way in a way that just is more I don't know more random and I've got a spoon coming pressed in so it's not about making something it really isn't about making something although what is made can be important for you but it's more about the opportunity to play around with materials and 
and to see what comes up see what sort of shapes and and see what the feels like bringing some water into this can make a difference as well so getting the the right amount of water if you were making a piece of clay work a product then having too much water might not be very helpful it's often too much water kind of makes models fall apart and and slip but plenty of water when you're you're playing and when you've got it feels a bit slimy and it feels a bit nice in the hands oh in fact it's a little bit more water Ooh. so if you're doing this with a young child like a family member then it might be that you can like really interact with each other in in a way of touch like by really sort of swapping your hands around you might kind of build up like a bit of a patter cake thing with the clay in between and it could be a really good sort of way of nurturing the attachment between you both as well and a really good way of of forming a connection where some other other means of art might not feel like that's possible so i'm going to bundle all of this together and this feels like really wet like in my view this feels a bit too wet but this will dry really quickly so we're just going to leave it as that and I'm going to let this dry and then build something else from it. In order to finish, what you would need to make sure that you've done is wrapped everything into plastic, like the clay that you're not using, because if you leave it out, it will, it will dry up and you won't be able to use it again. So just, just, that was just a couple of things using the clay and um, hopefully that's helpful for you. I have all sorts of kind of different theories that connect with this as well, which I'm happy to share with you at some point, depending on what sort of questions you might have or what you'd like to know. But um, there we go. We've got some very wet, messy clay and ready to wash my hands and go and finish this video so thanks so much for watching and give it a go if there's any other materials and art materials that you like to use let me know what sort of things that you enjoy using and if you find it therapeutic in any sort of way like like my title of my um, video is all about kind of the therapeutic use of clay so it's not about making a fancy piece of artwork or anything like that it's just purely about kind of how you might use it to express your emotions and feel a bit more regulated. So thanks for watching and bye for now.